Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Um, just wanted to stop in for a moment to uh, uh, talk to you. Uh, continue our conversation from last Sunday when we were talking about uh, how do we actually connect with God? How do we get closer to God? How do we uh, spend quality time with God? Uh, if the whole point is about relationship, right? How do we make that happen? What are the, some of the things, some of the activities, some of the um, disciplines that we can apply in order to increase our relationship, to, to strengthen our relationship with God? Because uh, if indeed we don't strengthen our relationship, what's the point, right? If we just profess with our mouths, but we don't walk it out with our body and our lives and our minds and our hearts, what is the point? So last week we talked about two things that... Um, we can use to pull us closer to God. One is quality time, spending time in the word. Uh, while I know that there's this thing about um, memorizing scripture. Good afternoon, Dominique. <laughs> memorizing scripture. I know we got this thing about that. And I know that that is like a premium, um, especially when you're in the church, you know, you're expected to memorize scripture. But I would say to you, know, what we talked about last week is, is read scripture. And if you just read it and study it, Instead of just, you know, just reading it, if you study it, if you see what's, what was said in front of it, what was said behind it, look up word definitions. If you do those sorts of things, the more you yield to God, the more you will be able to speak that scripture without even practicing it. You know what I mean? It's not like a test that you study. As you fill yourself up with God and his word, with the spirit of God and the word of God, they come to your remembrance. And, and there's a scripture that speaks to that. It will come to your rem remembrance. So let's not talk about... Um, um, trying to memorize it, but let's study it. Let's live it. Let's look at it. Let's pull it apart. Let's see what's in it. Let's see what God was trying to talk to us. So the first thing we had was quality time in the word. And of course, the second thing, and it, it, could, it could easily be the first thing, is quality time with God. There is no way to build relationship with God without spending time in his presence. There is no way to build relationship without being still and knowing that he's God. Um, so those are the, the primary tools in our tool shed that we have, uh, clear rules, right? Clear strategies to um, get with God. And, and the reason we want to connect to God is because there is an assignment upon our lives. And even if we don't believe that, even if we don't say there's an assignment, there's a connectedness, right? That this relationship requires. And it does not come by simply going in every Sunday to church and sitting. It comes through labor. It comes through cleansing, it comes through discipline, and most importantly, it comes through connectivity, not necessarily to the people in the church, although that could help, but connectivity to the Spirit of God. And how do we connect to the Spirit of God? So one of those ways, again, is by spending time in the Word. The second word we talked about last week is spending time with God. Um, and just a few things I want to mention about both of those. So when we talk about spending time in the Word, if this is done correctly, it will develop an we can develop an intimacy with God between us and God, right? When you're courting, when you're dating, when you meet somebody and you want to get them to know them, you want to find out their likes, you want to find out their dislikes, you want to find out their history, uh, what they're doing currently, uh, and, and most importantly, you want to see how they feel about you. And so with God, because he is spirit, the way we do that is our spiritual intimacy, right? And that takes patience. Just like it takes patience in the flesh, it takes patience in the spirit. So we want to develop a relationship with him that uh, where we're not just reading his word or listening to his word. We are actually becoming intimately engaged and involved with his word, his spirit, and everything else about him. Just like you wouldn't hopefully marry anybody that you didn't get intimately spiritually involved with. You definitely don't want to court God and not do that because it's a waste of time, right? There's no perfecting when there's no integration. There's no, there's no intimacy. So release yourself from scripture memory. We said that last week, because that's going to come. And even if it doesn't, he said, carry it in your heart. He didn't say, carry my book of mine around and memorize it. So even if it doesn't, if you're striving to be connected to God, you will be connected. You will be connected. And then his, his, his scripture, what his spirit says to you, will find a place in your belly and it will be there. And when we talked about the second one we talked about last week was spent quality time with God. One of the things I suggest, and I'm sure a lot of people are suggesting that, is that you get a notebook or two or three or however many you think you'll need. I have about 20 of them now. But you get a notebook, and I always date it. 
And then when I uh, am drawn to God or when I'm being disciplined and I go into a, a place of solitude, I just, I just pray and then I shut up and I sit still and I put a date on it and I write down everything I think I hear, no matter how silly it sounds, no matter how dumb it sounds, no matter, no matter if it makes any sense to me or not, I write it down, I put a date on it. And then eventually what happens is God, the more you do that, you will be walking, we call it tracking and tracing, tracking and tracing God. So you'll be moving throughout your day and it'll hit you that something you'll see or something somebody will say or something that is resolved, or, you know, a conflict, or anything like that. Uh, it'll just come back to you and you'll be like, wow, oh, man, that was in my book. And so what happens is we get encouraged that we did, we can indeed hear in the spirit. So it's, it's like anything else. It's a gift, but it has to be massaged. It has to be used. It has to be activated. And that's one way you do it, just taking notes. You know, sit in solitude, sit in quietness. And then when, you, when you're finished talking, take your notes, right? Sometimes it's, gonna, it's, it's, it's nothing. Sometimes it doesn't mean anything to us until we track and trace God. And I just want to get off, off topic for a quick second and talk about tracking and tracing God. For me, what that means is I get up every day actively looking for him in my life. I get up every day saying, where am I going to see God move? Where am I going to see his imprint, right? When is he going to talk to me? When is he going to lead me? How is he going to get me out of this? How is he going to open this door? And I'm watching for his spiritual movement. I'm watching for his handprint on everything. So again, those are the two things. I'm going to move on because I don't want to keep you too long as I always try to say that. I say that to myself over and over again, so I'll stay honest to that, right? So um, the third way, let's move into number three because we did number one and number two. The third way is something that I didn't used to do a lot of. I, I did it when I was with this ministry, but I, was really, I wasn't really called to that a lot, so I didn't do a lot of it. But it's intermittent fasting. And I'm not talking about the fad diet. This is how you lose weight. You know, you fast. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about giving something up. For me, it's food because I'm a foodie. I love food. So giving something up so that you can become more connected to God in the spirit. Fasting by itself is, is almost nothing. It's not, it's not effective. You might lose weight, but that's all you're going to gain, right? <laughs> but fasting, when it's combined with prayer, can bring us into discipline, can increase our relationship with God. It can, it can teach us how to submit to the Holy Spirit. And not just once. We think when we get baptized, it's a done game. No, it's not a done deal. You have to submit over and over and over again because well, guess what? We keep messing up over and over and over again. Right. So if we practice intermittent fasting, again, it, 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 if you combine it with prayer, it could bring your flesh under su to su submission, obviously, because you're giving up some things that you want because you're sacrificing. Right. You want to show that you are a follower and a believer of God and that he can trust you to discipline yourself. If we put it on our schedules. Or at least do it as led, it becomes a habit. It becomes easier to fast and pray. Right. Usually when you go into it as well, you want to go in with a specific intent and purpose. Um, a lot of times people, some people get just caught up fasting. They just like the idea of fasting, but they have not met. Uh, they have not established specific goals for that fast. You know, I could be fasting just to connect because I've been out of connection with God. I haven't been doing the things that we do, the due diligence to come close. You know, so when you fast, you have to have a purpose for your fasting. Maybe it's, you feel like you've been out of, of an alignment. You know, I've heard people, I do a young adult ministry and oftentimes they'll come and they'll say, Miss Nina, I'm just not feeling it right now. And that's real. You know, that makes sense to me. I don't say, wow, let me, let me throw holy water on you. Let me lay hands on you. Sometimes we just don't feel it. And so we have to uh, come into a place where we realign our spirit to the spirit of God and fasting, intermittent fasting will do that for you when it's combined with prayer. Um, ultimately, it's going to help us overall better understand the Holy Spirit leading, right? Better, better see the movement of God in our lives and in the lives of others. And it'll strengthen our conviction while correcting us and not condemning us, right? So fasting strengthens our conviction, amen, while correcting us but not condemning us. And that's really important because sometimes we carry so much guilt that we can't even get back to God. We, um, we're either one or two things, what I find, this is what I find. We're either so full of grace that we never feel the need 
to be convicted. We never feel the need to be better. He said his grace is sufficient. He didn't say his grace was the end of it, right? So that means there is an expectation that there's some stuff we're doing in 2021 we won't be doing in 2031. Or there's some stuff we did in 2010 that we're not doing now. So yes, he does forgive. Yes, we do not uh, We do get uh, correction, conviction and correction without condemnation. But no, we're not supposed to be the same people that started this journey when we finish it. And so intermittent fasting with prayer can help us uh, get rid of some of the junk. I was just listening to one of my friends that uh, was called to preach just now. He's, 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 I think, I want to say he's 70 plus years old and he's called, he was in the pulpit. I went to hear him preach. And one of the things he said is God showed him who he was and it was ugly. Again, God showed him who he was and it was ugly. And he was able to see who he was because he had prayed. He had spent time fasting. You know, he had, he had sought the face of God. And so one of the things God will do is he doesn't want to hurt our, he's not hurting our feelings. He's just saying, I want to show you who you are in case you missed that some of this doesn't align with me. You know, just in case you did not know what you were walking in. I think there's not a whole lot of good to you, but the, these, some, these some strongholds right here that we have to work through. So that's what um, fasting and prayer would do. That's number three. Number four, worship and praise music. Now, I love music of all kinds. Um, I'm, I'm just a, a music for that. So for me, if I put on a worship song, I go, I'm straight in. I'm straight in. And worship and music and praise music, oh, man, that for me, some people that like, if you're a person that likes music, I would challenge you. I would suggest that you try to get closer to God through that, through praise and worship. I don't think there's any time uh, when I needed a refreshing that I put on some music that didn't do it for me, that didn't have me running through my house, jumping up and down, hollering and screaming, crying, from, going from praise to worship to worship to praise to praise to worship. And by the time I got through, I was so tired and so full and so refocused that I knew it was the hand of God that did it. Some people think that um, even even the secular music sometimes there's some there's some things that I know that they're talking about God. So praise Him in the way you praise Him, but worship and praise music um, take care can take care of of connecting us, right? Second um, Kings three fifteen and sixteen. But now bring me a minstrel, right? When Elijah when Elijah summoned the minstrel and they begin to play. The hand of the Lord, power, and power that comes with it came upon him. So while we we always sit up in church and we say, well, it don't take all that. I don't know why they run around church. I don't know why they doing that. They singing like they, you know, about to be laid out. It does sometimes take all that. If you, when you connect to the spirit, you're not even looking at the people around you because you're getting in. You know, it's like dancing with the Lord. And y'all having a private a private party where you're, you're exchanging energies. So worship and praise music absolutely is a very good way to get closer to the spirit of God. Music itself is a powerful tool. So why wouldn't it be when we talk about ministry, we talk about religion? It helps us to focus on Jesus, right? It makes us revisit the goodness of God. That just happened to me today. I forgot what, I think they were singing. Yeah, they were singing, he's able. And I was just sitting, I was sitting in the pulpit with the rest of the pastors and I wasn't, I wasn't even thinking about um, me, right? I was just sitting there. And all of a sudden, the, the, the song came to my remembrance in the spirit. And before I could, could even think about it, I was up, I was praising, I was remembering all the stuff that God had done for me, all the mess that he had gotten me out of all of the ways in which he showed up and showed out for me that he didn't have to. Instead of giving me one apple, he gave me a whole bag of apples. Or instead of slapping my hand, he held my hand. So that the music for me brought back the remembrance of all of the things he had done. Even those things where I was disciplined, even those things where he had to teach me lessons. And before I knew it, I was, you know, I was shedding tears. My spirit was leaping. I was standing up on my feet, right? So for me, that's what music does. It helps me to focus on Jesus. It helps me revisit the goodness of God. It can also create an intense, and I say intense, worship and praise. There are some times when I'm at home 
And I just start running around the house. I don't, and I'm just singing that song and running around. I remember when I uh, was coming up a lot of times, and when I first came back here and started going to church, a lot of people would say stuff like, well, it doesn't take all that, you know, or they would say people, they, they would act like people did this intentionally, like they planned to run around the church. Now, I don't know if they do or not. So I don't have an opinion on what other people do, but I know that when we were at the church, I was, I had lunch at Wellspring. It was one day. And I'll never forget, I had my purple heels on. One day I was in the back of the church and I'm not even sure what, what happened. Somebody was singing something. Or, and all I remember is my heels came off. And fortunately, there were some people that were standing beside me to catch me because when I got through, when I got through running and praising, my body just went limp. So I know, right, that there's a praise and a worship that you can get to where you completely surrender, unless in that, at least in that moment. So it can create, music can create very intense, very defining praise and worship. And you can come out different from when you went in. So when you're seeing people that do that, it's not all games. I mean, sometimes it's just overwhelming sometimes. You know that phrase, when I think about the goodness of the Lord. God is my best friend. And when I think about my intimacy and I think about all the stuff he's forgiven me for, he, he thinks more highly of me than I think of me. And I'm the one that did the mess. So when I start thinking about all that, that's a praise and a worship right there for me. That's a praise and a worship right there for me because he forgave me when I can't forgive me. He loves all of me when there's some parts of me I can't love. So music for me will do, will do that. And also it says that God inhabits, inhabits the praise of his people. That's scripture, right? So, so if, if, if he inhabits and lives in and thrives on our praise. That says that yes, praise indeed is a good thing. That says when you're praising, you're not praising by yourself. That said, he right there with you. And so there's an intimacy and a connection that we get through praise and worship. And again, worship or praise music can take us in. And again, and also all, just like all of this stuff, it can strengthen our connection to God. So the fifth thing uh, we talked about earlier is journaling. I don't know about you guys, but I, even, even though God has brought me to a place where I can remember my dreams, sometimes my body does not cooperate. Like I, I've, I wake up a little bit, I remember the dream, I get excited because I can remember it, and then I want to go back to sleep, right? So what I try to do is keep a journal beside my bed. And even if I can't get up and write the whole dream down, I can write down certain aspects of it so that I can understand what God is trying to show me and tell me. Because he won't, you know, it's not like if you don't get it in the dream, he won't tell you another way. But I like to be, I like, I have asked him, I have prayed for the ability to remember my dreams. And so if he's going to give me that ability, then I'm going to get my lazy daisy up and write it down, right? And when you journal, it's, it gives you longevity. It doesn't go anywhere. You date it, it stays there. You can always go back and reference it. Sometimes that's encouraging because then I can see the progress I've made. Right. Or I can um, revisit something that the spirit said to me that I may have forgotten. Right. Or I can look at something and say, man, that's where I was then. But look what God has done in the last two years. So you get a new praise. Amen. Your faith is increased. So that's what journaling will do for you. Um, and, and then scriptures, you can look for scriptures. You can put scriptures that speak to either your lifestyle or, or something you're going in, you know, some, something you're going through right now. Scriptures are really, really good for that. They can uh, encourage you when nothing else works sometimes. Like you could, like somebody can give you a prophetic word and it'll make you feel good for the moment. But it's not until you go and try to um, get scriptures that align with that or try to mess it. You have to add something to that. But with the journaling, if you've written it down and you have a scripture that's in your heart, that scripture, if given to you by the Spirit, is going to be attached to you, Right? So it's going to speak to your life situations. It's going to encourage you. And you can also bring your vision to life by journaling. You know, uh, people people always talk about, uh, I can't, 
Habakkuk. It's, it's uh, write the vision and make it plain. I'm sorry, you guys, I'm transitioning fast from this service I just came from. Write the vision and make it plain. But if you can't hear or connect with God, how are you going to make it plain? And you take a chance when you're not doing it through connectivity with God, you take a chance that your flesh is telling you what you want to do. I see a lot of folks who um, who are waiting for their come up and their come up is coming to them because people are noticing them. They're getting a lot of likes, they're getting a lot of invitations and, and, and they ascribe that to a vision that God has allowed to come to fruition for them. Now it may or may not be, right? But when we have a pray and, and set and confirm with God, we don't know if it's us or him. We don't know if we're doing what we want to do the way we want to do it or if we're moving in the spirit, right? Thank goodness God can speak through us through words, through visions, through thoughts, and through feelings. And he can also give us mental pictures. Sometimes when we don't know how to write it down, he'll show us where he wants us to be headed and then we can apply the words or vice versa, right? So journaling is just, I mean, I just really believe in journaling, even though I'm not that disciplined, I don't do it every day, but I believe in it. I believe that it, uh, if we write it all down, it, it forces us to be still, right? Because um, if, if you've prayed and you've sat there to be quiet, like we talked about, and the spirit begins to talk to you, right? You're just being still and you're just listening and you're writing whatever you think and you're writing whatever you think you hear, it sticks to your memory better. I tell people every time they call me for prayer or prophecy, I say, you know, do you have a pen? Do you have a piece of paper? Put a date on it, put my name by it, and then let's let's start, right? Because when you write it, again, you remember it better. And also, I think writing is, is, is puts you in the frame of mind to own it. Like when you write a vision, you've owned it. So you, you believe that it's yours and you're more prone to walk it out. Right. If you're thinking about it, it can get it can get bastardized. It can get different things in there that don't make sense. It can get polluted. But when you write it out, it is what it is. It's hard to change. Good afternoon, Sharice. How are you? Right. It's hard to change it. So I'm a strong, strong opponent, a proponent of, of journaling. The other part of journaling that helps you is um, that memory, like I said, can often fail us. But. The more revelation we get, the more truth we get, and the more we write it down, we have something to help somebody else. There are so many things that I have in my old journals that I'm now teaching or that I'm now sharing with people. And it's because I wrote them down because my memory is horrible. I have, I wanted, I, let me not say that. I'm not going to claim that. Let's just say my memory is challenged, but it's getting better. But because I write it down, I have it to share. I have revelations. I have truth. I have things that I did not believe happened. And a lot of times when you see something happen in the spirit, it's so deep, it's hard to describe it to somebody. But when you write it down, then you can rebirth it when you need it as a testimony for somebody. Okay. So where are we at number five? Let's do, let's do number six. And then we're going to close for today. So the sixth thing, the sixth um, strategy or tool that we can use and truly connected with it. Let, let me say this too. I'm, I'm, I am going to do number six, but let me say why I'm doing this. The reason I'm led to do this teaching is because I believe that there are so many people that get to what is almost the end of this journey with the Lord. And they're only a third or a fifth of the way forward. You get what I'm saying? Because they've been on a cycle of going to church every Sunday and praising and praying and going to the altar and just every Sunday they go to church and they never step out and do anything different. They're never encouraged to go beyond just Bible study or to go beyond just the spirit. They're never really given, um, I, th I think from, from surveys I've done, especially with young adults, when I ask them, what are they challenged with when it comes to church and religion? The first thing they say is they want an experience with God. They want an experience with the Holy Spirit. So all the church in the world we can do, if they're not having an experience, if they're not, they're not understanding how to connect, they're not full. And the other thing they've said is that they don't really understand the fine points of the relationship, right? Um, I understand I'm a sinner saved by grace. I understand all those phrases that we use. 
But how do I really, really, really get down with God? How do I really, really, really give my life to God? How do I really, really, really change so that 20 years from now, I'm not on this cycle doing the same thing, the same mess over and over again. And then having the nerd walk around and just say, that's who I am. Amen. Walk around and just say, that's who I am, right? So um, the, the, other, the last thing I want to share is walking in love. That's a big one. Hmm. I'm just going to let that sit right there for a minute. Because we often, good afternoon, Pastor Melton. Absolutely. We often do not keep the main thing the main thing. Because what? It's hard. Unconditional love is a beautiful phrase. And sometimes we actually think that we do love unconditionally until a condition comes up. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Until a condition comes up that we're not pleased with or we're not happy with or it doesn't satisfy us. Until we hear something contrary to what we want to hear. Until we see something contrary to what we want to see. Until we get something or obtain something that's contrary to what we wanted. Until you do something or, that I didn't ask you to do or don't do something that I wanted. Right? So our love is laced with conditionality. But walking in love is one, is, the, is one of the greatest ways to get to God. And it's practice. It's got to, it has to be intentional. Because we're complex and we got a lot of trash in us along with a lot of goodness. So it has to be intentional. We have to get up every day and say, okay, I am going to purpose to intentionally be kind to everybody, to intentionally love people, to intentionally not hold grudges toward people. Even if it comes to saying every day I'm going to do something nice for somebody. Love is um, something that we have to practice because as individuals, often we are not good at love. We don't do it well. We don't do it well because we're, a lot of us are damaged. We go through changes. It's, it's hard being a human. Humans are complex. We're very complex. And so sometimes we have to uh, work at love. But I think part of the battle is realizing that love can be difficult for us and choosing to work at it. And I believe that that's one of the greatest ways to develop communion with God, right? To strive to love. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So one of the things is... Um, Love is, is, is actually the very nature of God and the very essence of who we are supposed to be and why we're in relationship with him. So if we're not getting that, if we're not uh, intentionally, we talk, this, this, is a, this is a discussion on strategies to connect us to God. If we don't see walking in love as a strategy to connect to God, if we don't see walking in love as a necessity to gain access to all the things that God can give us and to gain access to that relationship and to increase him and us and decrease us in us, then we've got a problem because God is, I mean, walking in love is the backbone. We can't expect to connect with God when we have nasty, mean, selfish, self-focused, or stingy attitudes. How often do we just say, well, yeah, I love God, but that's just the way I am. Or we give from our excess, but we never give from what we lack. Or we treat people like they're dispensable. And at any, any given moment, we may or may not support. We may or may not love. Some people use love as a weapon. They love you if. And then when you don't, they hold their compassion and their love against you. They hold it away from you. Right? So I'm learning um, to show up. I want to just give you the, the standard subscription, um, um, the standard text for it. It's 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read that because it's a real popular text and we all know what it says. But what I am learning is to show up not only um, as who I am, not the ugly who I am, but the good who I am but also is who I am striving to be, no matter what. So instead of, I think what we tend to do is we let we, we go into a situation and we let the situation change us. 
Like if, if, if I am on a panel, right? And there's somebody up front and I'm talking, I'm, I'm saying my little part and they're doing something beside, they're listening to the radio, I mean, listen to the, looking to their phone or they, they're talking with somebody sitting next to them. And then I let that, right? Make me feel like I'm out of order. I'm not doing that. It, it, it causes me not to love what I'm doing, not to appreciate, you know what I mean? It, it diminishes my love of myself. Then sometimes we can act out. So we let the outside stimuli get us off track. Instead of saying, I'm love. I want to be love. I want to, I want to give our love. And I'm going to show up as love in every situation. Even when I feel slighted, like if I'm on a panel discussion and they're, I'm slighted, even when I feel slighted, even when somebody clearly is being obstinate or nasty toward me, even when I know people are undermining me behind my back. My job is to show up as the default that I want to have, and that's love. I used to be the person to check people. I used to be a person that will say, I remember telling people, several people, 20 years ago plus, um, you know what? I do more for you than you do for me, so you can miss me with that. You don't have to be here. How arrogant I was. And so now I've grown and I understand that I don't have to do all that. My job is to show up as an example of what love looks like, ain't that? My job is showing up as an example of what dedication to God looks like. And do I get it right? No, not all the time. But do I strive to make that my platform? Absolutely. It's just like a stump speech when you, when you were running for a campaign. If you keep saying the same thing over and over again, eventually people are going to believe it. And the more they believe it, the more you become it. Does that make sense? Right? So when we talk about walking in love, we're not talking about walking in a bunch of conditional loves. I love you if. I love you when. I love you because. We're talking about love, walking in love. The kind of love that God gives us. And when you walk or strive to walk as God walks, there's an intimacy like no other. Like none of this other stuff. When we try to make our default love and to show up as love, there's an, there's, it's just so valuable. There's nothing that can replace that because I can know scripture. I can move in my gifting. I can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit all the time. You know, it's not a surprise, but if I have love not, then I'm further away from God than I was when I started the journey. We need to deal with our, our attitudes. We need to deal with um, ourselves. We need to be able to say when we are wrong, when we are out of order. We need to be able to say when we're wounded so we can put a side on it, so we can get over that and get on with it. And one of the things um, I, early on, I applied, I had a, I had a, uh, I was doing a, a blog, I'm sorry, and it was called God's Miss Anyhow. That was like 20 years ago, I think, when I started that. So I was in prayer about love recently, and, and God said, apply the same thing you did to that blog to this, and the same thing you, you apply to your life. Because I normally say, if I think God told me to do it, I'm going to do it anyhow. I don't care if you like me. I don't care if you're being nice to me while I'm doing it. I don't care if you're my arch enemy and God said, bring something to you. I am going to do it anyhow. So I'm God's Miss Anyway, Miss Anyhow. And so when it comes to love, I'm trying to apply that. I don't care that you don't love me. I'm going to love you anyhow. Now, would that mean we might hang out and do things together? Maybe not. But I'm not going to see a need and not try to fulfill it for you. I'm not going to um, give you what you give me back all the time. Like, we're not going to do tit for tat because you're there and I want to be somewhere else. Right? I am not going to act out in a loveless manner. I mean, yeah, a loveless manner. If, if, I can, if I can help it, I'm, try, I'm trying to get to a place where love is my default and where I love you anyhow. I love you regardless of how you cheated me. I love you regardless of how you talked to me. I love you regardless of how you hung up on me. I love you regardless. Because my job to love you is independent of my evaluation of whether you deserve to be loved. Hallelujah. Let's say that again. My job, our job to love is independent of whether you or we feel you 
are worthy of our love or not. And, and I, I think I want to I want to end with that. Because one of the things we can do is we can pray and ask God to help us walk in love. Right? Help us walk in love. And love that is unconditional. Love that is pure and love that is genuine. And I challenge all of us. I challenge all of us to show up as love because unforgiveness and hate blocks relationship blessings. And also it blocks our ability to hear God clearly. It blocks our ability to move forward. It blocks us for a lot of things that we are sitting here waiting on. So I'm going to challenge all of us to persevere and to try to show up as love. Again, you don't have to date the person. Y'all don't have to break bread. Y'all don't have to talk on the phone. Y'all don't have to be besties. But we need to learn love as a default. And I love you too, Sheree Sounds. <laughs> we need to learn. Because you know, the other thing that happens with that and I'm going to be transparent since I see uh, Prophet uh, Sharice is on here. So we had a conversation a couple of days ago that didn't really go well because we're very, we're very high, we're very passionate, and sometimes that passion overtakes us. Amen. And so we ended the conversation. Not it wasn't ugly. We just we just separated. We said, okay, well, bye, bye to you too. You know. But because I love her and I know that she loves me. I did, not invite, I did not invite her this Sunday. She was on the list, just like everybody else that's always invited. Because regardless of our actions, I love her. And, and the thing is, even when we don't know how to love, well, the more you purpose to love, the better you become at it. Right? So most people wouldn't have been mature enough to invite her. And then other people wouldn't have been mature enough to show up. Hey, Amen. That's love. Love is saying, I know you own something today, but I love you anyway. Love is saying, man, I was nasty to her. Let me, let me, let me get an olive branch. That's love. Love is caring as much for somebody else. Hmm, maybe we should be teaching on love, right? <laughs> love is caring as much for somebody else as you care about yourself. And again, to me, out of all the six things that we've gone over, I think we have a couple more left, but all of all of those six things, love can, can lead us to all of them, right? Because a love for God and his people, absolutely, will cause us to want to fast and pray as we seek him more strongly, as we seek more of him in us. Our love for God will cause us to fast, cause us to want to pray. It will cause us to worship. It will cause us to praise. It will cause us to celebrate him. Right? It will cause us to want to write the good things that he's done. So journaling comes from love. Amen? It will cause us to want to keep track. Sometimes I'm journaling about something that God has done or shown me, and I'm crying as I'm writing. And so later on, I get, I'll see all these smudges on the book because I'm crying in celebration as I'm writing. Right, because the remembrance of some things shakes me up. There's some stuff that God has said to me or done to me or given me as a prophetic word about me and what I, what he thinks of me that I will never ever get over. And so as I journal, I relive it and I'm encouraged again. I'm back on track. I'm ready again. I love you too, Miss Gridiron. Amen. I'm ready again. So walking in love will position us for everything else we talked about. Solitude, quietness, asking questions. You know, I think we were raised not to ask God questions. God honors our questions. Because again, when you love somebody, you want to know about them. Right? Love would lead us to spend quality time, to be still. And no, when we really know that he's God, we can't even keep it in. We can't contain the joy. We can't contain the excitement. And joy will also lead us to spend time in his word and basking in the spirit. Sometimes, you know, it's so bad. I'll get in, I'll just be in a place with God where I'm sitting in the spirit. And I'll have a whole lot of stuff that I need to do. And my flesh will keep trying to break me away from it. 
but it's so sweet. I can feel the love so deeply that I'm pulled to stay in that space. And sometimes it's 10 more minutes, sometimes it's 30 more minutes, sometimes it's an hour. But I assure you that when I leave, I am better positioned to not only learn more about God, but learn more about what is required of me in this relationship with God. So God bless you all. I hope uh, this has helped you. I, I think I have, I think next week what we'll do, we'll start studying how to walk in fruit of the spirit because that's the, uh, that's the last one we want to cover. And then we want to talk about how the spirit shows up because if you, if, if I guess I'm a person that likes to measure how well I'm doing. I like an indication that I'm moving from one to two or A to B. It doesn't have to be a scale, but I do like an indication that I am getting better than I was last week. And so the fruit of the spirit kind of helps me with that, right? It helps me say, are you still as nasty as you were last, last month or, 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 you know, yeah, gra grace is sufficient, but that doesn't mean it's sufficient for your life. What, it, what grace is sufficient means is my grace is sufficient to get you where you need to go. My grace is sufficient to change that nasty attitude. My grace is sufficient to change that selfishness. My grace is sufficient to connect us more strongly. My grace is sufficient to fulfill the purpose and to position you in the power that I have awarded you to do the work that I have promised you that you're going to do. Grace is sufficient doesn't mean that's all you need and just walk this earth and don't worry about doing anything else. Because if that were the case, we wouldn't have fruit of the spirit. We wouldn't have prayer. We wouldn't have any of that other stuff. So let's not get it twisted. I don't care who told you that that's what that meant. It does not mean that. It means that through his grace, he will draw us. Through his grace, he will guide us. And through his grace, we can live and not die. So hallelujah. I thank God for you guys. I thank God for God, right? And that he chose, mm. that he chose me and he chose you guys to do the work that he's given your hand to do, but also to love unconditionally. Because he loves us through so much. So take a deep breath. If you, if I, as, I, as I'm sharing, I am keeping notes. So if there's anything that we've shared over the last, ooh, I don't even want to count how long it's been. I, even want, I came into this kicking and screaming <laughs> since February. Anything that I've shared on any of the recordings or the videos, they're all, everything's videotaped. Feel free to, to use it if it's some teaching that you uh, want to do uh, or if it serves your purposes. But I love you guys and I will see you next Sunday. Um, and remember, love uh, conquers all and it also covers a multitude of other sins. Hey, Prophetess Glennis, Apostle Glennis Howard. I love you guys. Hey, Jen Marie. And I'll, I'll hang around for a few minutes just to see if there's... Um... Hey, Jen Marie. Um, I hear the Spirit saying that that door has already opened. So don't be really prescriptive and what you think that door opening should look like. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Um, it, 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 will, it will appear to you as something a little bit off skelter. Like, come on, help me hold this for you. Okay. It's almost like walking in a room, you know, your private room and say your scarves are all in a certain place. It may be something as simple as one scarf is out of line. It's not in the place it's supposed to be in. So that's what your door is going to look like. It's not going to be like a big wind and just swishes open. That's not going to happen like that. Amen. It's just going to be something that feels out of place. And, and I hear the Spirit saying, instead of thinking that of that as a negative thing that's been misplaced, think of that as an entree into where you're supposed to be going. It's a step forward that you're supposed to go into. Amen. And I'm hearing you say, I see you saying, yes. Yeah, so is that making sense to you? Because that's, that's what it's going to look like for you. Uh, God, I love God. He fashions everything for us, right? Um, as long as we're willing to do the work and to try to be in alignment, he'll fashion it for us. Amen. And, and Dominique, I don't know if you're still on here, but you got a step up coming and it's a big step up. And I hear, thank you, Holy Spirit, it's both spiritual and literal. 
So it's something tangible that you got to touch as a step up, but it's also a spiritual step up. Amen. Amen. So get excited. Start praising him for that right now. You tend to be a worshiper more than a praiser. He said, give him some praise. Find you some praise music and put your praise in. Right? Put your praise in. Put your deposit on what he's sending your way. And he'll pay the balance. You won't even have to pay anything else. Just make a deposit. And he's gonna, he's gonna pay the balance of it. Okay. So, and I hear soon and very soon. Right. I know sometimes prophetic words take a long time because we have to, I want to do a teaching on that too. What do you do when you get a prophetic word? How do you solidify that word? And uh, we'll, we'll do that before, maybe before this month is out or we'll start in June because it's important. It doesn't do any good to get a prophetic word if you don't know what to do to activate it and to, and to make it move forward. So uh, God bless you and keep you, Marie, Jim Marie, and uh, may his light ever shine upon you. And Dominique, God bless you and keep you and may his light shine upon you. Um, uh, Apostle Howard, there's going to be um, a whirlwind turnaround. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, you have seen God move in a lot of ways. So um, this one is going to blow your mind more than it's ever been blown. Right? Because God has done a lot for you, that this tangible that you can touch. But this one this one is going to make you pause. This one is going to put you in a praise. It's going to last almost a whole day, right? You got to be praising and then think it's over and, and go, get ready to go and leave and do something. And the praise is just going to come up. In the grocery store out here, <laughs> you just got to be praising. You got to have to, you know, pull over the car if you're driving so you can praise. Because this one's going to be a head spin for you. And, and okay, I'm even going to go here. I hear the Spirit saying, it's going to be something that you even forgot you were waiting on. Because sometimes, you know, when you get a lot of prophecies, you get a lot of praises. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, a lot of promises. It's hard to keep up with them. But this is going to be something that you've forgotten about. And he's going to bless you with it. And, and, and don't get upset when some people leave, you know, when they disappear. And they just stop calling because of that. Because I know we've all heard the phrase, some people can't go where you're going, but they also can't go with you where you want to go. And so those are, those are two different things, right? They can't go with you on assignment, but they also can't go, go with you where you want to go. Okay? Is that, I hope that makes sense. So God bless you and keep you, and uh, may his light shine upon you. Um, it should be so I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, um, okay, every head on your hair, he loves you and that you're special and you're different. And when he brings that up out of your belly, you're going to understand why the conflicts, why the struggles, why the challenges, right? When he brings your full power up, mm, you're going to rest in that thing. You're going to finally get rest. People are going to stop trying to box you in and tell you where you belong. They're going to stop trying to tell you that you didn't see what you saw or hear, hear what you heard. And, 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 and I know we, we all are imperfect, but I'm, I'm saying in the big picture, because a lot of people try to come at you. So he said, when this comes out, when this is birthed, it's going to give you a 360. And you're not going to have to use your mouth anymore except to do the work that the, you know, that the mouth, I mean, you're not going to have to use your mouth in defense or anything like that, right? Because it's going to be clear who has his hand on you. Amen. So God bless you and God keep you and may his light uh, shine upon you, Sharice. Amen. Is Pastor Melton still on here? I don't know if you are, Carrie, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Um, The first thing I hear is relax because there's a big movement coming in terms of not just spiritual, but in actuality, you know, uh, a physical movement and a situational movement. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And it's going to be different. It's going to challenge you a little bit. But what's going to happen is that when things start coming to fruition, it's going to be like uh, this comfort level that you have. It's, it, 
Okay. It's not going to feel like it has felt sometimes in the past where you feel like you have to catch up, right? It's almost going to be like you just had to turn it on, if that makes sense. There's a difference. Quit catching up means that we have to um, do things so that we're in line with what we're supposed to be doing. Turning it on means it's already there. It just had to be provoked. It just had to be shook up. It just had to be turned on. So you're naturally going to go into these places. You're naturally going to fit into these new roles. You're naturally going to uh, minister in this way and in this area. And, and I hear the Lord saying, take a deep breath and honor who he's made you to be. And don't let anybody else ever again dishonor that. And know that you are much needed. You are very powerful. And you are grounded in him. And so this is like season two. You know, when we, thank you, Holy Spirit. When we look at a series, that first year we get all after we get excited. And so we may have looked at it at the, when it first came on and be like, let me see what's going on with this. And we might like it. And usually it takes you one or two episodes to get in. But after the first year, if it's really, really something you like, we're looking for year number two. We're looking for the second season. So this is your second season. So get excited about it. Amen. Get excited about it and know God's hand is all over you and all over your ministry. And even if you can't track what you're doing in terms of ministry, it is happening. Seeds are being planted. Angels are in the front. They got your front. They got your back and they got your sides. They front and rear sides. They got you. And you have inside you what you need. He's going to embellish it. He's going to increase it. And he's going to position it. But you already have it. So may God bless you and keep you, uh, Pastor Milton, and may his light shine on you. Okay, and then, and then, uh, Miss Gritter, I just want to encourage you. Um, I, I know sometimes if you feel like a gerbil in a cage, it's just going round and round and round, and you don't see your progress. But I hear the Holy Spirit saying that you are, you are better. You are more advanced. You are further than you've ever been in this journey with me. And you really do understand more than you give yourself credit for understanding. So God wants you to try to start honoring yourself. And not because of who you, you know, what your name is or what job you have or who you were born. He wants you to honor yourself because of how long you've been trying to stay connected to him and to go deeper in him. Everybody does not have that stamina. So when you, so, so this is the thing. If you consistently keep doing what you're doing, you're not going anywhere. You're getting deeper and deeper. You just don't know it. You sell yourself short, so you just don't know it. But God said your effort is not in vain. And he's, he's touched you and you felt it. And this time last year, you couldn't do that. So God said, stay on it. Stay on the fence. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep coming for him. Keep chasing him. Keep desiring him. And celebrate every little victory. Because it's the small things that add up to the big things. Picture a puzzle. All those little bitty pieces make one picture. Okay, so may God bless you and keep you and may his light shine upon you. Um, and I hear greater things. Greater things. Fam. Greater things. Right? There are some things that God wanted to give you 20 years ago that are coming now. So this is a time where you're going to have to put some time aside to be available to enjoy some of the things that God wants for you to enjoy. And, and, I, and I actually hear the Spirit saying, I'm demanding that you do this. I'm demanding that you put some time aside for me to bless you. And some of those blessings I give you I want you to keep them for yourself because for where we're going in this legislative activity, where we're going, you need some peace. You need some rest. You need to go out and have a good time, right? So that when you come back, you're refreshed. So in this season, expect people to just do stuff for you, right? Expect, expect sometimes when you don't have anything on your agenda that you have to do, and know that that's a time for you and your family to get away, even if it's for a weekend. And don't count your dollars because God's going to have it there for you available to do it. But this is a season of much work, but it's also a season of R&R. &R. 
right? He doesn't want you wearing your flesh out. And he doesn't want you burning out your mind. And he wants you to enjoy your life more fully. And not just because you love neighborhood people and you love feeding and you, no, he wants you to go and have some fun just for you and your family in this season. And that's funny. I heard the I heard her Holy Spirit say, and that's an order. Okay. That's not a suggestion. <laughs> so may God bless you guys. May his light shine upon you. Uh, may you always know that if anybody else deserts you, God never will. And I would like to even say, I don't think he can because we are so entwined with him. So get to God. We talked about eight ways to get closer to God. Choose whichever one you want. Choose all of them. And, and you know, if you got time, choose the one that works for you. Knowing scripture and memorizing scripture is not better than connecting with the Holy Spirit. Connecting with the Holy Spirit is not better than being in the Bible. So do what naturally comes to you and sprinkle it with some of the others. And watch God move and watch him move more abundantly more clearly and more thoroughly in our lives. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. We went a little long this time um, and I'm, I'm out and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Everybody out here knows my number. If you need anything, if you want anything, give me a buzz, give me a call um, and I will see you guys next Sunday. Be blessed and make your life work. <laughs>